welcome to Prime Reviews. I am your host, Scott Prime. Today we're going to look at a book called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin. So I'm going to try to sum up the whole backstory on this, this comic book and also kind of give you some advice if you're watching this early. First, here's the book. This officially comes out on Wednesday, October 28th, which while I'm recording this is tomorrow. The book is already probably going to be sold out. Uh, from what I understand, like uh, the pre-orders were 125,000 copies and the book only printed 100,000 copies. They've already announced that there's going to be a second printing of the book. People are coming out of the woodwork hearing about this book. People at my job, people at other places, because they've been Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans for, you know, some for 30 years plus now. Um, and there's been all sorts of different incarnations of the Turtles. And at some point, every one of those fans hears about this last Ronin story. Now, to really sum up the last Ronin story and the concept of it, there's such a a better article of it. You can click up here and it will sum up the whole story of everything you want to know and the concept. And I'm going to try to summarize that for you. Um, from what I understand, the last Ronin story was an idea that they had Eastman and Laird had back in 1987. Uh, this was right before the little independent black and white comic book that we all know and love today, right before it became a giant empire of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with uh, the cartoon, the movies, the live action stuff, many different incarnations for different comic publishers. You know, you go back to Mirage, even Image Comics for a while had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series, and it's currently being published by IDW. Now, at the time, in like 1987, they had this story taking place around 2017, I think was their idea. It was like you know, 30 years in the future type thing. And uh, so here we are. Once IDW decided to restart the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles under the helm of uh, writer Tom Waltz, they decided to like dust off these pages. And I can't remember if it was Eastman or Lyard who said that, you know, he keeps everything because he's a pack rat. So he found the pages, they discussed doing this project. And so this has been in the making with ideas, original ideas dating back as far as 1987. The Last Ronin takes place, as the book says, now, which, so that you can read this at any time, the future is now type thing. It is also, what you should know, it's not based on any turtle continuity. This is a book that's a standalone book, and if your favorite thing about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was the old Archie comics, or it was the, the TV show that was on CBS, or if it was the image run, this could be a story for any of those timelines or inter you know, incarnations of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. First off, this book is $8.99. It seems very pricey, but by the end of this, I hopefully can convince you that this is well worth it. Uh, first off, let me show you the actual like cover art without the glare. It's going to show up here in just a second. There's the last Ronin. It has several, several, several uh, different covers. Uh, I believe the back of the book says like, I don't know. There's a whole page of, it looks like 25 maybe different covers, exclusive covers. There's a sketch cover you can get. They're pretty hard to get a hold of. I know at my shop, there was like only one exclusive cover and then the rest were just the regular cover books. So that's what I'm showing you today. Uh, the book opens up. It's in, it says now, but really it's the future. It's kind of, it, it reminds me of this almost I don't want to say Mad Max dystopian future thing, but more of a Judge Dredd dystopian future thing where there's like walled cities, uh, there's pollution, there's these big overlords that try to keep people in their city. So it, I, to me, I was expecting more of a Mad Max thing because I knew nothing going into this. Uh, but you're, what you're getting is kind of more of a Judge Dredd type feel of the Turtles future. Uh, as the book goes on, early in the book, you see the last Ronin trying to break into the city um, throughout the book. It's really fun that they don't tell you the identity of who the last Ronin is. They want you to keep guessing. And throughout the book, he's having conversations with his brothers, the other turtles that are no longer there throughout the book too. He constantly uses a different weapon with great precision. So you're constantly you know, second guessing. Is it this character? Is it this character? Wow. He used that weapon. Maybe it's this character. You, you don't really have a clue at all during the book. Um, I, I, I think it's, I love these books sometimes where the, 
the character has their own dialogue, you know, with like somebody important in their life, you know, instead of talking to them yourself, you're, you still talk to yourself, but in the presence of like another character, you've seen that lately with Batman, Batman's talking to the deceased Alfred. He's always going back there. Cause he'll listen to that advice. He might not listen to himself, even though it's one in the same. So I really like that about this book. There's a lot of action. It has that, it has layouts from the creators itself. Uh, it, the script itself is written by Eastman and Lard, uh, Laird. Lard. I always I've done that ever since I was in junior high and got the book. Eastman and Laird have the script with uh, Tom Waltz. Um, there's further writing credits. I think and believe that uh, Tom Waltz further develops the script. Uh, the art team is done by. I'm assuming these are brothers, and I'm not even Esau and Isaac Escora, maybe. I know I don't pronounce any of the names right, but um, beautiful pages. There's also one page drawn by Ben Bishop, which I don't mention here. And I do want to mention um, Luis Antonio Delgado did the co colors. And once again, fabulous colors. So those colors need to get credit as well. Um, the book is a good read. It's very well paced. It has that same feeling. If you were lucky enough to ever get some of those black and white turtle books, um, you know, they're all, this is the whole book is laid out by Eastman himself. So, you know, you got all that going for you. And um, I don't know. I, <laughs> I enjoyed this book. I had the same feeling of reading this book as I had when I read the very first time uh, Batman, the dark Knight returns, which was a very dark book at the time by Frank Miller. Um, it probably set in motion along with Watchmen, you know, like all these kind of dark brooding heroes um, from the, the eighties. So this really still feels like, you know, Eastman and Laird, were really influenced by some of those stories and they wanted to do their own like epic, you know, let's think about this in the future. Let's go so far in the future and then we can write towards something and have a goal for this. Um, and I think that's just a wonderful idea. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much. I, I truly, truly loved this book. I do think it's overpriced. There's nothing I can do about it. Cause if you ask me, I think every comic's overpriced. I don't want to pay $4.99 for a, a you know 38 page Spider-Man book. And I don't really want to pay $8.99 for uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin. But what, let me tell you what I'm gonna do. Tomorrow I'm gonna wake up, or if you're watching this, that would be today. I've already woke up and I've traveled down to the other comic shop down the street to try to get one of those variant covers. I would love to have a blank sketch cover uh, to you know take to a convention because we won't always be cooped up in our houses and conventions will return. I would love to get one of those blank sketch covers and you know hopefully find one of these guys, maybe find Kevin Eastman or somebody to to do a great story or I mean a great picture on this book that has such a great story. I think you will love this if you give it a shot. Um, it ends with a kind of a cliffhanger ending where it's like, what? And I'm excited to read the next one in some ways. I'm excited that I got to read this now. I'm kind of jonesing about it. And at the same time, I, I want more. I kind of, it's one of those books kind of where you almost wish that you waited to read all the collected, uh, all the issues all at once. So, um, but anyways, I'm excited. I'm happy. And I can't wait to get to the comic store to hunt down. Maybe one of those other variant covers. If you're interested, you're watching this, get to your comic shop right away. Because this thing, I truly believe, is going to sell out. I wish I would have told my local shop to order more. Because I really think once word of mouth gets out about this book being so spectacular, they're going to wish they ordered more copies too. Uh, but don't worry, a second printing's coming. Um, I hope that's enough to convince you to buy this book. It's, I feel super strong about it. If you're a big fan of like the Judge Dreddish dystopian futures where you have this, you know, it's, it's ninjas, it's robots. It's, it's got ties with the main villain back to the turtles, original roots. And, and it brings back some of the old characters as well in a, in a different way. And that's the best I can describe it for you. I highly recommend Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the last Ronin. This has been a prime review. Thanks for watching.